Now, exponents have certain properties that they follow. For example, a base to an exponent m times a base to, an ex to the same base of another exponent will be the, the base times m plus n power. If you've got an exponent of one base to an exponent, and if you've got another base of the same base to another exponent, it becomes x to the m minus n power. If you're dealing with a number base to a power times the quantity of another of the same base to another exponent, it becomes x times m to the to the m nth. m times n becomes the power. And as shown before, you can flip that over um, if any of the exponents are negative. If you've got an exponent over an uh, sorry, a variable over a variable to an exponent, it becomes the exponent, uh, the base of the first to the exponent over the second variable to the same ver to the same exponent. And as long as this second exponent is not equal to zero. Also know that any time you have a number, let's say 3 to the 0th power, it's going to be 1. If it's 1,000 to the 0 power, it's going to be 1. Anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So now that we know a little bit about exponents, let's work on scientific notation. Used in sciences to help shrink a number that's more than one, or much more than m one, generally with three or four zeros sometimes, or if it's much smaller than one, where it's somewhere in the thousands or millionths. If we took a number like 54 million, we'd shrink it first by finding where the primary and the secondary digits are here. And we'd put a decimal in between those, so it'd be 5.4, then multiply by 10 times, and you'd use the distance of the decimal point to move, for example if it's moving left, you're going to use a positive exponent. If it's moving right, it's going to use a negative exponent. Here it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 5.4 times 10 to the 7th power is equal to 54 million. If it were something smaller, for example, in electronics, you deal with things in the microfarads on capacitors, which is a millionth of a farad. Down here, it's 1 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 power. Now that we've worked with some of the integers in exponents, let's work with the rational exponents and roots. Now, why am I using rational exponents, such as b is 1 over n, and square roots? Well, it turns out that these are, in fact, similar in the fact that n exponent that's rational is actually a square root. 
3 to the 1 half power is equal to the square root of 3. And if you have a number like 3 and put to the 2 thirds power, it's going to be equal to the cube root, the denominator to the root, of 3 and multiplies it, or rather it does an exponent similar to the numerator of the ration. So it'd be the th mm, cube root of 3 squared. Now, when you have problems with radicals, you'll want to simplify the problems. For example, <clears throat> if you've got an nth root of a base times the nth root of a base, the base can be different, but as long as these two are these two roots are the same, you can simplify it to the nth root of the two bases multiplied. If you've got it as a base to an nth power over a base to an nth power. That also simplifies to a nth power of the two bases divided. And as long as this base is not equal to zero, the property is legal. If you want to rationalize a denominator, for example, square root of 5 over the square root of 3, you take this number and multiply it by the denominator over itself, which is going to be equal to 1. But since it's done this way, it's going to be the square root of 3 squared, which is going to be 3, because the square roots and squares cancel each other out. However, up here, because we follow the rule of n to the a times n to of b equals the nth of a b, this becomes the square root of 15 and this becomes 3. If you want to rationalize the numerator, you do the exact same here, except you use the numerator term instead of the denominator term. Now there's also a little seen um, property of these exponents and radicals, and that's if you have a square root or an nth root of an nth root, another root inside a root of a number, we'll say x, this then becomes the n times nth root of x.